So having entered all the data and knowing about the system, how do we actually start moving a train in ETCS? I'm going to start by having a look at level one. So what is the key principle of ETCS? Well, it is that the system will stop the train moving unless it has got authority. Without permission, you will not be able to move the train. So where can the authority come from? Well, obviously, it comes from the track side. That's either from a Belize group or over the radio system. However, we are talking about level one and there is no radio connection. So we are reliant on Belize groups to transmit the authority. So if we're going to start in level one, what does the train know? Well, very little, really. Almost nothing. It is just waiting for instructions. It may, if we're lucky, know its location relative to a Belize group. But it won't know what gradients it's on, what speed it can travel or how far it can travel. It is being started up and it is now waiting those instructions. And without an authority, there will be no movement. So what we need to do is to get the train to move so that it can read another Belize group and get the authority that it's waiting for. But without that authority, it can't move. We've got a deadlock. So how are we going to resolve this? Well, we have to allow the driver to take over temporary responsibility. They will get the information from a line side signal or the signaller, and they will then assume responsibility for the safe movement of the train. All this is documented in a series of documents known as subsets. These are mandated by the Technical Specifications for Interoperability in Europe and the NTSN National Technical Specification Notice in the UK. These documents describe the detailed behaviour of the ETCS on board and to a lesser degree how the track side should operate. And there's a series of specifications covering all the various elements of ETCS. The one that is core for understanding how ETCS works is subset 26. The system requirements contained describe all the behaviours of the ETCS on board and how it will interact with the track side. And if we look in one of those chapters of subset 26, we will find there is information about how to undertake start a mission. And we have quite a complicated flowchart, and we're going to have a look at that. It's important to emphasize that this flowchart is around the normal events. Not everything is documented, but there's enough here for what we need. So we start right at the top. The driver enters the driving cab, puts in their key or switches on, and the system starts up. The driver is asked to enter their identity and then the system checks whether it has a stored position and level. As long as the train thinks it knows where it is with a good enough level of certainty, it will move on. And in this case, because the level is one, then it will go straight through and down to a box at the bottom left, waiting for the driver to give some more input. If, however, the system can't confirm what level it is or its position, it will ask the driver to re-enter or validate the level and will end up in that same box at the bottom. So what happens next? Well, we've already looked at what information the train needs. So from that bottom box on the left, we can enter the train data. And this will be selected by the driver from a menu and they will enter and validate the information, starting with the train running number and the remainder of the data. Once all the data is in, the system will check what level the train is operating in. And if it is in level uh, one, then it will go on. Uh, sorry, I forgot that if the running number is not valid, 
then the driver will be asked to enter it. Having got the driver running number in and the train data, then we can get down to the box on the right, waiting for the driver to press the magic start to start the journey. So what happens when the driver presses start? Well, we're in level one. So pressing start will cause the system to automatically offer staff responsible to the driver. That offer has to be accepted by the driver because they are taking the responsibility for the safe movement of the train. Staff responsible, known as SR, is a mode of the train where the ETCS is not managing the movement of the train. It is up to the driver. There may be some limits such as a maximum speed, but the driver will need to get that authority to move, normally from a line side signal. As I say, the speed will normally be restricted, typically to 40 kilometers an hour or 25 miles per hour. And the driver now can move the train and so it can move it up to the signal and pass the signal and read the next Belize group. So that when that train passes over Belize group, and it is normally at the first signal, then the message will be transmitted containing a movement authority, which will allow the train to proceed with ETCS supervision. 